the French Institute. The TV. Hello, everybody. Someone needs to mute or turn their TV down. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another segment of Let's Talk About It on a Monday. Um, today, we are so excited to come to you. We really enjoyed you last week. Even those of you that went back and looked at our replay, I was really excited of the uh, comments, um, the questions, and we would like for you all to continue to do that so we can have things to talk about. So tonight, I'm excited. I'm grateful for us to have the facilitator for the night, but before I call on that particular person i'm allow everybody else but that person to introduce themselves at this time let's start with none other than dr pamela hill hello everyone good evening welcome to tonight's call i am dr pamela hill located here in Fredericksburg, virginia i'm a salon owner school owner clinic owner <laughs> so i wear a lot of hats but welcome to tonight's call all right thank you dr pam now let's hear from Marguerite Moten. Hello, 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 everyone. This is Marguerite Moten. I am your owner of Amore Hair Studios here in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I am your trichologist, your wig maker. Welcome to tonight's call. Okay, I heard the girl say wig maker. All right. Yes. I'm excited. Well, Dr. B, you know what to do. All right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Dr. Rashawn Brodnick here in the Washington, D.C. area. I am a licensed cosmetologist, educator, um, regulator, and many more. But we <laughs> welcome you to, to this evening's call and hope that you enjoy it as much as we do. I like, I think I heard, this, I think I heard Dr. B say regulator. Y'all better look yeah. out for him. He regulates yeah, yeah, yeah. some things, all right? I like that. It's always good to hear from, from an introduction from the panel because each week or month, something changes in what we do. I am Dr. Suzette Robinson. I forgot to introduce myself. I am Dr. Suzette Robinson. I am um, an educator, school owner. Uh, also, I, I'm a certifier. So those of you that's there, that's looking to be certified as a hair loss practitioner or a drugless practitioner, please give me a call. But let's get off of that. I want this young lady um, who is a great asset to this, this group because anything, and, and the blessed part about it is having what you need in your group, okay? So when we need something, we can call on each other for different things. I call on each and every one of them for different things, okay? So today we have none other than Shanae Starnes and I'm gonna let her introduce herself because she can tell you about her like no other. So take it away facilitator for tonight. Yeah, great. Listen, thank you, Dr. Suzette. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, to be the facilitator for this evening. Uh, and thank you guys for joining. I am Shanae Starnes and I'm located in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. I am a licensed cosmetology educator. I'm also a trichologist. Um, I'm also a, a business financial professional in both health insurance, life insurance, uh, as well as tax prep. And so uh, just a culmination of experience started by way of cosmetology has placed me where I am today. And I still feel blessed and a need to share my journey so that others can uh, get to their goals sooner, quicker, and faster than I had been able to do. So tonight, as you can see, the topic is really about um, tax prep, which is short for tax preparation for entrepreneurs. And I'm gonna be excited to share this platform with the rest of my colleagues, Dr. Pam, Marguerite Moten, Dr. Suzette Robinson, Dr. Rashad brought, brought next for this evening, okay? I wanna first, um, oh, I wanted to first um, just kind of start out with us as these uh, business professionals, entrepreneurs, small business owners, and 
one of the questions that we may have at some point is like, how do we expand? You know, it's how do you start the business properly? And then it's like, well, how do I expand? And because of that, hearing it from a, a teacher perspective to up and coming future professionals, I have come to the realization that we need to start talking about our understanding as it pertains to taxes. Because once you scale up, you're going to go into different brackets of income. So there's a foundational knowledge or literacy that needs to be had when it comes to taxes. I will say before I get started with the question, is that it's, uh, it's not comfortable. Right. I did not, I didn't want to talk to people about how uh, insufficient or unknowledgeable I was with my finances. And I found that when I became an entrepreneur through cosmetology, the money was coming in. I lick my thumb, get the count in. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was really feeling good. And I felt like I was successful, but I realized that in the background, I didn't know how to take the income and purchase homes or purchase uh, apartments, cars, the things that I needed to, to live, and that's why I created this income. So with saying all of that, what would you say, um, or, or what would be one of the questions that you would have uh, or ask a new person starting in business that you wish you had asked yourself starting out as it pertains to your understanding with taxes? Hmm. Well, I guess I'll start. <laughs> one of the questions would be, um, and I think this is the most important one, is how do I set up taxes or, you know, for my business? Um, I know when I first started, I promise you, and you're right, Shanae, I licked my thumbs all the way to the store and anywhere else <laughs> I want to spend my money. But when it came to taxes, I'm being honest, I did not understand how to set it up much less where I needed to go. I, I was just totally clueless. So I think starting there would be the first initial thing that needs to be asked. I love it. I love I, it. Um, I, wanted I, to, I, I, wanted, go ahead. I wanted to also say, um, like for me, it was the bookkeeping. Oh, okay. The bookkeeping was the the, the hardest part because even though we kept, you know, back then we did appointment books. So you always wrote your, yeah. So I was like, oh, I got my appointment book. I'm good. This is all I need. I can add this up <laughs> at the end. But, you know, I didn't know in the beginning. Um, but once I got audit, <laughs> it opened my eyes. <laughs> audit will so change your life. Change my entire life. Yeah. Once that happened, it was so much easy for me to actually do the bookkeeping. Okay. You know, part of it. And I just found it easier to do it um, monthly. You know, at the end of the month, I would just, you know, make sure I had everything for that month. So that way, when I went, all I had to do was go to that month and get that total, write it down, and then put it on a spreadsheet and send it to, you know, my tax, you know, person. Before I had books, a whole bunch of books and um, receipts over here, receipts that I didn't fold them together and the ink that went off it. And it, it, was, it, was a, it was a mess. <laughs> So it was a learning lesson. So I'm glad you actually have this conversation because the students yes. to this day are not doing taxes. Yes. I, and, I, and, I, and I want to add to, um, <laughs> I learned a lot. In this pandemic time frame, I learned a lot. And I'm dealing with a lot right now too, just getting everything organized, especially with the tax piece. Um, I want to say to um know what your what your entity is know what type of business you want if you want to be a, you know those are the things and just really understanding really what each one means so and i'm learning that day by day month by month you know in all the years i've been in the profession like pam said I did everything, use my appointment books. That's how I calculate my numbers. <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. where I gave to my tax person. And one other thing I want to, to add in too is uh, making sure that the um, accountant or CPA that you, you get, 
make sure that they are IRS certified because yes. that will make a world of difference. There'll be a world, it'll make a world of difference. Look them up, check them out. You know, go to your website, look them up. So I just want to add that piece. Excellent. And that's a good point. Um, <clears throat> and to your point, you said a good thing and that is check the preparers, right? Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I would probably say to my younger self is to learn how to prepare uh, your own personal taxes. So okay. one of the things I always say is that we are not shifted any differently from who we are personally than we are in our business. So whatever habits that we develop, so from a personal standpoint, it's about budgeting, right? Well, the terms change a little bit when you get, it's still the same, but it turns into bookkeeping when you're talking about a separate entity outside of yourself, which is what we call the business, right? Mm -hmm. So what I want to implore upon the people um, that want a better working knowledge of the tax um, circumstance is to get to understand in reading their tax papers, their 1040, reading that form and gaining an understanding. And I promise you, I hear all the time, but I don't, that I'm not interested in that. I, I don't want to know about taxes. I don't, but in, in order to go forward, you're going to need to know because you don't know if someone's doing something wrong. Prime example, I had a tax preparer to, in the industry doing hair and uh, did not even know what was being entered on my tax return until I looked at it many, many years later and there was inaccurate information. Hmm. So that's that was my wake up call. That was my aha moment to say, okay, I think that instead of us talking about how some of these literacies as far as finances are not discussed in school. We have to take the uh, onus and make sure we do it, even if it's hard. So let me implore upon you that learning is layered. Just because when you hear it the first time, you don't understand it. I learned the same way. I got to keep hearing it again and keep hearing it again because you're going to hear it if you get uncomfortable and you get audited. You're going to hear it if information is sent to the IRS that's inaccurate. So hear it while you're on the good side where you're able to do something rather than on the flip side. And um, I'm going to add some things that I'll cover here tonight. And please just um, let me know. Uh, if you have something to add, and I'll ask a question here shortly, but let's talk about like your obligation and responsibilities for paying taxes. Like as a tax pro, um, there are what we call due diligences that we have to make sure that we are asking of the taxpayer. Well, that's the same question that you should know and have and provide to your tax pro professional, okay? So tonight we're gonna to talk about the uh, obligation. We're gonna talk about um, a little understanding of payroll tax, federal withholdings, because that's another thing. Had anybody ever went to a job and they went to fill out that form? That form is so key. So I when you, okay, go ahead, what you got? No, I was saying that I not. <laughs> well, this one is, um, the W-4 is going to be for employers. If you are employed mm -hmm. by a company, you're going to fill out the W-4, but the, you're talking about the W-9. If yes. you are an independent contractor um, okay. connected with a company, then you're going to fill out a W-9. And, and business owners, if you have contractors that you're doing business with, you need to make sure that you have them fill out the W-9 form. OK, so those are the, the two most popular ones when it comes to making sure that you're reporting earnings. OK, so we'll cover that and um, some of the penalties for not paying taxes. And uh, we're, you know, just finding the solution. Right. Right. So in our we the people, the Constitution, 
right? <laughs> it was established to collect taxes, right? So who was that president? I think it was um, Benjamin Franklin, I, I believe. And, and if somebody can correct me on that, do so. Um, but two things for certain, death and taxes. Have you ever heard that statement before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't evade, if you evade taxes, then it'll be a problem. You'll be what? Handcuffed, you'll be hit with these huge penalties. You see the, the famous people. Yes. You know, they get all this money and they take the ownership of their uh, responsibility and put it in someone else's hands and it's not even getting done. Wow. So if you don't realize this, understand that the, the income tax system is built on the idea of voluntary compliance. This is why like the IRS, it acts like the collection agency for the government. Mm -hmm. The IRS is the collection agency for the government and they're collecting the taxes on the income that you report, right? And so if you don't report your earnings, then they say that you're under you're operating in an underground economy, right? So, you know, having that understanding, and guess what? You're not, your lack of knowledge doesn't excuse you from participating. So anyone want to add to that? Well, you know what, Shanae, I'm glad you're talking about this because um, you know, knowledge is power. And and I want to just say this for those that's tuning in that has just got on. Please get a pen and some paper and take notes because that's what I'm doing today. Because <laughs> any little bit that we've missed and Shanae is going over uh, will help us because you're absolutely right, Shanae. They're not concerned about the fact that you didn't know. Um, mm -hmm. Because I've had someone to tell me that. They've said, if you're gonna start a business, then you should have taken the initiative to learn what to do before you actually start. This is exactly what they said to me. Yep. And um, and they were right. I couldn't get upset. So no, they don't care about the fact that you didn't know. If you start a business, these are things they're saying you need to find out before you actually call it a business or before you began to take payments from anybody or anything. And, and I'm glad you're doing this tonight because a lot of times we will start businesses just to get the M-O-N-E-Y, but mm -hmm. not set up for the longevity of mm -hmm. our business. And you're right. They will lock you up. And here's something else they will do. They will, they will get their money at your bank account. Yes, they will. Yeah. Now, I, I tell you what somebody told me. <laughs> I know they will, okay? And yeah. so this is very important. So please take notes tonight, please. Well, I want to add to, it's funny that you asked the question, Shanae, because <laughs> I was just on the phone with somebody today. And you know what? She was <laughs> like, you know, I was just, just talking to her a little bit about, you know, my situation or whatever. And she was like, really, Marguerite, that was your responsibility. And she was like, you need to she said, go to this link and you need to read up the difference. You need to, you need to know, you need to know the information for yourself. Stop believing what people are telling you and read the information for yourself. Yes. And that was the key for me. That was the key because the fact that, you know, not under having a business and not understanding the business is one thing. But when you have a business and not understanding the business part of the business, that's another thing. And so I just want to add that little piece there. It's so important and it is important for us to read the information for ourselves. If we don't understand it, that's where we, we have professionals to ask questions. Ask questions. If you don't understand something, read it over and over again till you get the understanding. True. Read, read, read. Don't sign nothing that you haven't read. Okay, that's the key. <laughs> don't sign nothing that you haven't read. That you have don't have a clear understanding about what it's saying to you and what you're responsible for. So, I'm glad that you asked that question. Well, Shanae, I have one question for you. Okay. So we're talking about um, 
you know, filing our taxes. But what if you're in a situation, what do you do if you are, say, we are in talking about salon businesses, you are in a salon and your employer does not give you a W-9? Okay, so you're in a salon. Now, I need to know, is the salon set up commission-based or independent booth rent? Well, let's talk on both of those. So let's say, you know, as an employee, um, I'm not given a W-9 or as a contractor, I'm not given my 1099. Okay. So if you're not given the 1099, mm -hmm. okay, and you are paying um, booth rent to that individual, okay, it is their responsibility to have come to you to say, hey, I need you to fill this out mm -hmm. because that income that they're that you're paying them is additional income that they're paying taxes on. Mm -hmm. But for you, the individual, you make sure that if you're not set up as a, a contract worker, that you still fill out what is called a Schedule C, which accounts for the uh, income that you ha you have incurred from your business. Mm -hmm. So if they don't ask you for a W-9. And, and you know what? And that is so true most often in our industry where we go and we just sign up and get our booth rent and we go, we get to go. And they're done that. No one's given me a, a W-9 to fill out. Mm -hmm. But it would have been in their interest to have done that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So on the flip side, if it's commission-based, nine, nine times out of 10, unless they're operating their business as a, as you a contract worker, when you start becoming an employee of an establishment, usually some of those uh, commission salons, like your big box uh, salons in the malls and things like that, they're going to, they should, they're going to issue a W-2 mm -hmm. because they have their business established as a, uh, you as an employee. So that meant that when you uh, filled out your paperwork that you were filling out a w-4 form too in the w-4 form when you are working for a company it is to tell the company how much to take out of your check towards your uh, responsibility on the income that you're going to earn at that company a company pays what's called payroll tax wow. and that's why you hear a lot of professionals that are uh, have corporations, they blame, man, that payroll tax is so high because payroll taxes go towards, your company is paying towards your Medicare and your social security. They have to pay that with you being employed with them as an employee. But when you fill out that W-4 form, you're saying, listen, I need you to take out some money from my earnings to also go towards my income that I will earn from this company. And so I don't want to go too far, but did I kind of answer the, well, not kind of, did I answer the question? Yes. Okay, okay. Because I can go on a little bit with that. Sometimes people either claim exempt. Yep. Because I work at, a, I have a job where I'm an employee and I also have my businesses where I have a, um, I write a Schedule C, I have an LLC, I have both. So I get W-2 forms and sometimes I get um, uh, the 1099 forms from companies that I work for. But at the end of the day, I still have to make sure that I am paying enough taxes on the income because at the end of the year, when you go to file your taxes, if you don't, you're going to pay it then. It's yes. either you're gonna, yeah, it's either you're going to, you're going to, like pay enough during the year. But what I hear from people is I want all my money. They say I want all my money through, throughout the year. But then when it comes to tax time and they have to pay so, oh, well, I got to pay so much. And so I find myself going line by line on that tax form to help, under, help them understand what would be the best route for them to do maybe the, the next year. Right. Because once the year is up, it's up. So. Now we're we're doing everything uh, for 2022. But like I said, I, I'm here at this place because I was terrible at my finances. I was terrible at understanding taxes, being in this industry of uh, cosmetology, just not good at all. So 
Um, anyone else have a question that they want to add before I continue on? So I already kind of hit where I was going to go next, and that was with the payroll taxes. So understand, because that's another thing, Marguerite kind of alluded to it, but you know, when you start a business, you want to consult. My suggestion, and even in the cosmetology book, it does indicate that you may want to speak to an attorney. Because when you start a business, you're entering into a legal obligation. Whenever you ask someone to pay you money for a product or service, now you are legally bound. It doesn't matter if you're an LLC. You're a sole proprietor at that point, and you are wide open to being connected with anything that may be a, um, a fallout with you exchanging money. And you can operate like that. But at some point, the IRS is going to say, hey, they're going to be scratching their head like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you a business or are you a hobby? And these are actual terms <laughs> that the IRS uses. They want to know. And, you know, for startup businesses, your first year, you, you get up to like $5,000 where you might have a loss because you're just starting out. Like the, the IRS knows that new businesses may not make a profit. In the first year, they give you the first five. But after that, baby, if you still aren't making a profit, then they're going to say it's time to audit you. Let, let's see what's really going on. And, and when that happens, it, it may shake you up and put you in the place that you need to be. But it's going to be a very costly shakeup. So this is where, you know, getting that understanding on the front end is very important. Um, I am at a place now, like with reading the 1040, the 1040 is where all of your income is. So like if you're filing for some of these bank loans or some of these grants that are out there, they'll say things like, I need a copy of your taxes. Well, what they're looking for is for the, the first and second page of your 1040, which houses all of your income, all of your taxes that you've paid, and if you have a business, then they're looking for your profit and loss statement. Those are the things. But if you can't understand what's being asked of you line by line by line, I'm just imploring upon you uh, to take your time to start to learn that. Marguerite made a great, great point. And the point is, she said, you know, to read the information. And it's very easy to say that, but what I've run into is that it's hard to comprehend. So people may have the ability to read it, but they don't have the ability to comprehend exactly what it's saying. And so, you know, that's where I can come in and say, okay, well, let, let me get this understanding, okay? And, and from that point, the next time you hear it again, and then the next time, and then the next time, because I didn't get to this point by understanding taxes on the first go around. And I am almost 50 years old and I've been paying taxes for years. And here it is that I've just gotten to a level of comfortability when it comes to it. And I want everyone else to, because don't get the, the social media, don't let it get to you where you're like, I, I need to start this business. And so many businesses started during the, the pandemic because at the end of the day, people aren't working their business and then they're questioning, well, what do I do? What do I write off is a question when it comes to business. And I just wanna go back to the fact that when you start a business and, and Dr. Robinson alluded to this, you have to do what businesses do. And we talk about this sometimes where it's the business plan. Like you have to write the business plan so that you can have an understanding of what you're doing so that if your business is not going the way that you like it to go, you can reference it, you can adjust it and make money. Too many people start in the cosmetology industry. I'll use the state of North Carolina. I heard this a few years ago. Students graduate from cosmetology school and in the first two years, if they aren't connected with the mentor or they just don't have anybody to help them through, then they either work this business part-time or they don't work it at all. And this, we always talk about it being one of the most lucrative uh, industries to, to have a business. And I think entrepreneurship is the most lucrative 
financial experience that one can have. But, but why is it such an uncomfortable headache? And that's the question that I would ask. Why is it an uncomfortable headache? And that's not for everyone, but everyone um, may feel like that when they're first starting off, uh, when you start talking about starting a business, right? So anyone wanna kind of add in uh, to that uh, piece of information that I just shared? Sure. Let me uh, just say this. You asked the question, why is it such a headache, right? And so I was thinking, I believe it's such a headache because there's a lot you don't know, right? And what we don't know often makes us uncomfortable. And so the other part is there's a lot of work to be done. Mm. You know? So yes, entrepreneurship, like you said, is probably one of the best financial endeavors a person could go into, but it requires so much work that it's not for everyone. And some people may say, well, you know, it is more work than I want to put in, you know, so I'm just going to get this nine to five where I know I only have to work 40 hours and that's all I'm going to do, you know, and what the common misconception we always hear, I'm going to get my business because I want to work for myself, right? I want to be able to set my own hours, but we have no idea that in the beginning, you're not setting your own hours because you're working beyond that 40 hours just to get your business going. You know, once you've had the business, let's say five years, once your business really starts doing something, then you can say, well, you know what? Now I'm going to kind of curve my hours to this because I have it down pat. I've learned it. But until you get to that point, you know, you're in sometimes that uncomfortable space. And so, you know, what I would say is definitely like I think Marguerite said, I know, Shanae, you said it, <laughs> learn as much as you can about your business and about the facets that go together to create your business. And the more you learn and as time goes on, you'll feel more comfortable. And I know, Shanae, you did say that um, at this point in your life, you said you are a lot more comfortable with dealing with taxes. And that is a very scary thing because most of us, we don't know what the IRS is. We don't know who the IRS is. We just know it's three letters that collects money until they come knocking on our door and ask for the audit, right? That's when we realize who they really are. And so I think that's why a lot of us fear that. But if we gain the knowledge in regards to our taxes and what they do, then we will know how best to mitigate those situations that could possibly come up on us. I wanted to add something too, because it's something that, that, that Dr. Rashad said, and it's true. Everybody wants to own a business or start a business, and they don't understand that you wear multiple hats. See, when yeah. you work for somebody else, you have these people in place. When mm -hmm. you work for yourself, you have to be your marketing person. You have to be your HR mm -hmm. person. You have to be your payroll. You have to be your bookkeeper. You got to be your scheduler. You got to be your people that take... um inventory so you wear so many hats so it is a headache at some times some but point. if you do it in the beginning and have a system it'd be so much easier at the end of the year to yes. actually audit yourself yeah and i know it's easier said than done honey because i didn't say plenty of times oh i do it tomorrow oh, I, do it tomorrow. <laughs> I do it tomorrow <laughs> you know because we do get tired especially if you are a hairstylist that's behind the chair stool and you still doing clients and then after clients, you know, you're cleaning up and now you got to do the bookkeeping and the, all the paperwork that comes with it. So it's not easy to be an entrepreneur, you know, mm -hmm. to say the word, yes, but to do the work, it's not easy because it takes a lot because you wear multiple hats mm -hmm. and you have to continue because it's not too many people you can trust to actually do that. As you see, the Dr. Marguerite said, you know, so many people that got in trouble putting their stuff into somebody else's hand and not back check them. Uh -huh. so unless you want those three letters come knocking at your door <laughs> you know because they'll hold your money forever but honey when they want this oh they gonna get it they gonna get it they gonna get it it's gonna be garnished okay. it's gonna be pulled it's gonna be cars going out to drop whatever it needs to get their money they gonna do it it ain't no oh wait a minute let me get this document no <laughs> uh -huh. so you know we, we definitely gotta read more if we don't understand or comprehend, we need to ask questions. Don't be embarrassed mm -hmm. to ask those questions, mm -hmm. you know, about it. 
when I got on it, oh, after that, I know my cat be like, okay, girl, <laughs> like you got, because I had someone that was, you know, with the IRS that did my taxes and messed me up completely. Yes. Completely. By being incorporated, going from an LLC to, you know, to a corporation, messed me up completely. My kids wasn't even, they were my kids. They were still young when I was able to claim them, but they wasn't partners or business owners, you mm. know, to anything. So you definitely have to read. A lot of times we do get comfortable like, okay, you know what? They've been doing this 25 years. Oh, they got it. I don't need to double check nothing. I'm just waiting for my money. I heard that amount that I was getting. I'm yeah. looking every three days for that mailman or my account to alert me that my money went in. But we didn't look at the paperwork. Now, if we would have looked at the paperwork, I probably would have caught that. And not been audited, <laughs> but I did not because he came well recommended. He did a lot of people that was in the industry, so I'm like, okay, so you know about salons and stylists and barbers, and so I'm like, okay, well, good. I ain't got to tell you nothing. You know everything. All I got to do is give you all my stuff. Mm. And that was a mistake on my part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we got to read. But this is why we're sharing this because us sharing is letting people know that they are not alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I add something? Mm -hmm. um, y'all are so on it tonight. I'm taking notes. I don't know about what y'all are doing, but I'm taking notes. And I'm going to say this because I've had people that supposedly know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you, Pam. And negligence on my part. Mm -hmm. I put my trust in their hands okay? mm -hmm. because they were certified. They were all of these things that they're yeah. supposed to be, but they were not honest. Mm -hmm. And they knew, hear me good. They knew I was not going to read any of that paperwork mm -hmm. because I had put my trust into them. And when people find out you're not, well, they ain't got to, they can do whatever they want to. And they did. So I did get audited. So I do understand that part. Um, so what I got out of what you said so far, uh, Shanae, girl, I think I called Dr. Shanae. Dr. Shanae. It's coming. It's coming. Was, I do need to be familiar. I mean, really, if I didn't get nothing else out of this whole conversation, I do need to be familiar with taxes. I do need to, to because he, again, knowledge is power. If you don't get familiar with what you need for your business people can tell you anything, anything. and they can do anything mm -hmm. okay so i i'm i'm kind of in reserve with that now because i protect my business and i protect my information because i was treated so badly dealing with my taxes so i ask a lot of questions i probably irritate the person that's doing them but hey you know that's because I don't know. And when you take time to explain it to me, it will help. So, Shanae, this is what I got out of what you said. When we're talking about the 1040, it's, it's important for us, and you correct me if I'm wrong, it's important for us to go back and read the 1040 information, the explanation on what the purpose of the 1040. Mm -hmm. Um. You know what I'm saying? So I can understand. And then also the W-9, if if that's what, you know, if that's what you're doing, to be familiar with that as well. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Um, and while you're saying that, I just want you to know that on the 1040, it has your filing status. You can get mm -hmm. audited for the incorrect filing status. Yes. Okay. So that, that is very important. It also talks about like what's called the standard deduction. Mm -hmm. See, this is on the personal side. Forget a business. Let's talk about the personal side, like understanding your personal taxes, because either even if you're like an LLC or you know a disregarded LLC, it's mm -hmm. still personal taxes plus a Schedule C for your business that's on the 1040. Mm -hmm. Or you are a uh, you have an election as an S corp but you still flow through to personal. So like understanding the filing statuses, um, there's five of them, the standard deduction. So a standard deduction, the government gives you 
for the year. So currently the standard deduction went up and I'm gonna use the example, if you're ahead of your household, the standard deduction for 2022 is 19,400. So if you earned 30,000 for the year, you'll automatically subtract 19,400 from that because the government is giving you this standard deduction. And the difference of that is what you're gonna be taxed on. Now, if you have expenses that you have to write off, it may even be lower than that. But my, my point is understanding filing statuses, um, standard deductions, different types of income. So your W-2s that you get from your employers that you work for is one type of income. When wow. you get a 1099, um, which is a not, uh, NEC, which is a non-employee compensation, that's what it stands for. Um, that is another form of income. So getting all of the income, maybe you took a distribution from a uh, 401k that you had, right? All of these are different types of incomes. And that's just, you know, making sure that you have an understanding of the tax. And you know how you can get it? Start perusing the irs.gov. The government puts everything out there that you need to know. It's just not good for um, find my refund, like what my refund is. Right, know? right, <laughs> right. <laughs> it ain't just for that. Those of you that don't get a refund. That's you good. Know, they have all the information. They want you to be more empowered. They do. Um, and before we get out of here, I, I definitely want to say that I will have a... I'm just being a little bold with it, but like a tax training um, for individuals who just want to be trained. You can either be trained because it's personal, because that's what I did. I went and, went and took a tax class and it was personal for me to understand it. But then you can take it and start a business with it. Um, but it's so much information. As a life insurance agent, it's very important when you start talking about investments within a life insurance policy, it ties back to having a tax advantage. When you go and get Obamacare for health insurance, what is right. that? We say subsidy, but it's really called a premium tax credit. Like everything I realized float back into taxation. And that's just one area that we just need to get a little clarity on. And I want to be uh, the one from the people that are uh, willing to get uncomfortable to get comfortable um, for some tax training. It could be for you as an entrepreneur. It could just be because you want to do this. You might say, hey, I want to make some part-time income, you right. know, on it. But I know whoever is going to be connected with me, my goal is to make sure that you do it, have it correctly and, and do it the right way. I don't, you don't ever really hear me promoting taxes like that. I have a nice set of people that has, they've grown with me and they've grown into being better taxpayers. You understand? And so my business is built on like referrals. And that's what I like. Like you see a lot of posts, oh, I can get you the largest refund. I can do this and that. Those are all marketing. Mm -hmm. um, advertisements, marketing ads. Right, right. At the end right. of the day, it's really about what you have done in your work, with your jobs, how many, how much taxes you had taken out, what did your business make? I can't guarantee anything except for we can take a look at what you have and I can assess, you know, everything. So I just hope, and I thank you for the opportunity to really get um, comfortable with saying, hey guys, it's really time to get uh, comfortable with taxes. Absolutely. And it's not as hard as you think. It might okay. seem like it, but if we keep saying it's hard, then it's going to be hard. But if I start saying to you that taxes is easy, then you'll start to have that lift off your shoulders. Absolutely. And you'll say, well, you know what? It, 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 it might be easy. Yeah. <laughs> so can I say, I'm going to read, I want to read something. One of the, one of our um, viewers is, you know, typed in, and this is from Dr. Latanya Telefero. Um, this is, this is, we cannot say this enough. She says, you have to take responsibility for your taxes and your business. And um, I'm very appreciative that we're having this tonight because we're trying to get business owners, 
to understand, and I like what Shanae said, because she said it in such a loving way, um, is that we don't have to be, we're only afraid because we don't know yeah. or we don't understand. And when it comes to taxes, I'm going to tell you, that's something you don't want to play with. Yeah. I agree with you, um, uh, Marguerite, Pam, and Dr. B, and Shanae. You don't want to play with that because, see, it's easy to get the money, spend it, but it's hard paying them back when it's time to get them back to the money. <laughs> and they will That's get right. it by any means necessary. I did say this, and I'm going to say this again. They will they will go into your bank account and get that money. Sure will. And, and yes. death, you know, yes. if you oh yes. and you don't have your affairs in order no will you're dying in, um, oh yeah in, 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 uh intestate um yeah they'll get it then too that that's why our government has what's called a judicial system they, they're going to go through probate court whether okay. you understand it or not while you're living it's going to happen when you're gone and you know having that outstanding tax debt that um uh, is is important to have an understanding of what your what your responsibilities are absolutely your family absolutely. don't know that you might be in debt somewhere here they thinking well you tell them you have this life insurance policy and that does create an estate but you know is the life who's the owner of the policy who are the beneficiaries like right. you have all that tightened up when was the last time you looked at those policies and i'm just bringing that part up because you go back to estate taxes when you die Everything is tied to taxes, taxes, taxes. So that's why we got to get more familiar with it. Get more, say the word. It, it, it's uncomfortable now, but it'll get easier and easier as you start building upon that knowledge. Um, let me say this. And if I'm correct, cor if I'm wrong, correct me, Shanae. You did tell us that you will, you will, you do have classes, right? Yes. That you offer. It, I want you to do this for me and for us. Put it in the chat so that our viewers, ourselves, <laughs> we will have the information to, um, you know, to make sure we get the education that we need so that our business will survive past a month, one year, and so on and so forth. And we will survive no matter what comes, we will be in order. Um, this is a very important, and you all will not just hear this this one time. We will probably come back several times over, um, to because, you know what? Who was that? One of y'all said you got to hear it over and over and over and over again. Yes. Okay, until you get it. Yes. Well, that's what we're doing now. A lot of times, people like for us to talk about different things, events, people. But we're talking about things of substance tonight because many of y'all getting ready to file these texts. And many have. And you know how people do. They can't wait till it's tax time. I can't wait till I get my W-2. They ain't read nothing. They don't know what the deduction, they don't know any of it. They just take it to a, a, a preparer and they just sit there and let them fill out everything. And they just sit there and look. But all they concerned about is how much I'm getting back? How much you're back? <laughs> I mean, how I much want you, I want you to be the first preparer. That's the whole gist of this. You are the first preparer. I agree. Yes. You have to learn how to prepare because you got to prepare the accurate document. If you can't get yes. the accurate documents to me, the tax preparer, then you're not <laughs> doing that great at your own preparation. And I'm just saying what it is. I'm not judging. That's why I'm, yeah. we're, we're here with this conversation. If I can't get the profit and loss statement because you've not you know, done it all year and we have to go back and recreate you know, what should have been done already, you know, let's just get uncomfortable. Let's not be comfortable anymore because it's hard to scale up. Some of us are not even reporting as much income that we need to have. And well, then you're talking about missing out on home ownership. Mm -hmm. you're, you're missing out on home ownership. Your income tax is your money necessary. Your, of course, your credit is your character, but your income tax is the financial statement to having you qualify and it's going to take you about two years consecutively to have the income necessary to purchase the home 
to qualify for the home that you need. So if you're currently like receiving assistance, you know, government assistance and you know, you just don't want to give those things up. Like sometimes you have to, you have to shift in order to get to the next level. That's true. And you got to plan. I'm telling you to plan it two years out, get uncomfortable with the comfortableness that has kept us where we currently are. And once we do that, it'll be nice when we want to get to six figures. It will be nice when we want to get to 250,000, a quarter million dollars. Like, because all of the small talk that we're having now you got to get that understanding before you get there. We got to get it here. We got to get it here. And you're not going to know everything. I don't know every facet of the tax industry. I'm, I'm going to be real comfortable with helping others with the basics. Like, let's get the foundation done. You know, so that you can scale. You can go purchase what you want. Now you're talking about, you know, grants and loans and, and, and things like that. You know, understanding when you have to pay something back and, you know, it, it's a whole literacy of understanding when it comes to finances and taxes is not excluded from it. Your legal obligation is not excluded from it. Your yeah. business startup is not excluded from it. So let's go ahead and get the bags. Hmm. I think this is um, probably the most important <laughs> conversation we've ever had um, dealing with taxes because Shanae, you've been very transparent in your information to us. And I'm, I'm just going to say this, please, if you're watching this and you even thinking about starting a business or you have started one and you haven't gotten the tax part just right, mm -hmm. it's not right. too late. It is not right. too late. Okay. It's never too late. Anytime you get the information that will help your business that means it's not too late. So you may have to start over and get your stuff together. Or if you start your business, you don't have a business plan. Hey, go ahead and get one. Because you do not want to have a business and you lose everything because you hadn't done your taxes right. So again, Shanae is going to put the information in the chat so that we will have a way of getting to her to get the information. And for the record, she's very patient. <laughs> Y'all ever heard the book for like uh, taxes for diamonds? You know, <laughs> they got books that says this for diamonds, this for diamonds. Well, she's the information for diamonds in Texas, so to speak. Not calling you a dummy, but just saying that there are things that we lack. And we need to get more understanding of or more information for. I've been in business for years and there's some stuff I still got to get together. So I'm not saying that we just got it going on or we got it like that. No, we all need to be um, transparent and get the help that we need. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to make sure the information that she sent is in the chat. So those of you that's watching, those that you will be watching, please contact her, get the information that you, and, you know, be, be open to, hey, I've been in business X, Y, Z. I, I've never done this. So what do I need to do? And once you get the information on what to do, do it. Do it. Um, Shanae, is there anything else you want to add or say? Thank you. Yeah. So I'll, I'm willing to do like a, a consultation, a very reasonable consultation, 30 minutes. And it could be something as far as, you know, look, let me look at your prior year's taxes, help you understand. I, I don't mind doing that. Like that's just a small tidbit, but the, the tax training is going to be an eight week training. Like it's something that's going to teach you what you need to know, like a foundation. So that's just a little different. But for someone, it is tax season and uh, you just need about 30 minutes for somebody to peruse and you can't quite ask the taxpayer because they think that, you know, you're trying to get information, you know. Um, I can be that person to kind of help you with your language when you go to talk to your tax preparer and all that good stuff. So just wanted to bring clarity to that and, um, uh, ShaneeStarns.com would be a place where I can collect your information and you can simply put taxes there and um, I can reach back out to you um, with, with anything that you need. Okay. 
Well, I posted it, Shanae. So let's let's get on it, guys, and let's kind of fix what we haven't done. And truly, truly, remember one thing she said. Get familiar with it. If you're doing a 1040, go read. Read it up. You know what I'm saying? So because I know people say, well, you know, we don't like reading. Well, don't let that be said about you. Read. Read, understand, don't ever put all that you have done and put together in the hands of somebody and you don't know what they're doing, okay? Because believe me, mm-hmm. you'll pay for it in the end. And I know yeah. because, you know, you we trust in people, but trust the fact that you can get the information and, and know what's going on. So I think our time is up. and. It has been wonderful once again. Um, We're so thankful. Um, I think, Dr. B, it's your turn to come to us on next week. Um, (laughs) He don't disappear. Where is he going? (laughs) Disappeared. (laughs) Dr. B. So um, he will uh, let us know what the topic will be, and I will post it earlier so that you can tell a friend. As I said, go grab a friend, grab a neighbor, grab somebody and let them know that we're on. Let's talk about it. If you have enjoyed this topic and you know you need more information, please put it in the comment section. Let us know. And we will, if we need to come back and revisit because there's more to this and I'm sure she's going to come back again because this is tax season and I do not want you to get hemmed up or messed up, okay? So we will definitely revisit this, Shanae. So I'm just kind of letting you know. Um, and uh, Dr. B will be, await your topic on for next week, okay? So with that being said, we're going to thank all of our sponsors, which is Isabella Graphics and more, uh, Pretty Gloss Princess, Platinum Beauty Supply, Kingdom Dominion Worship Ministries, and Often said, Dr. Donnie, I mean, Reverend Donnie B. Robinson. <laughs> Donnie has um, taken time to post all of our bios. And so you can know who we are. Check us out. Go check us out. When we give information, don't just take what we say as face value. And I think we put this on here that our information that we put out is information to help you, to help you along the way. Okay. Some things that we're saying, it's not for you to just like, oh, this is the gospel. Read. You can read too. Check it out. Do that. Start doing it. Start making that part of your daily routine. And you will find that um, when you check people out, you can check out if they're legit or not. Okay. So we thank you all for tuning in again. We'll be back on next Monday. If the Lord says the same. And we will be here at... 6 o'clock Central Time, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And as we always say, I don't say bye, so I'm just going to tell y'all, live.